I've featured a lot of kit bashing and conversions on my channel, but those guides have always been specific to a particular model and are focused on achieving a very specific result. In this and in future videos, I hope to provide you with some tips and tricks that you can apply to your own kit bashes, whatever they might be. Now to start this new series off, I thought I would begin with something that is required for nearly every conversion or kit bash that you will be making. That is, of course, your tools. The most basic tools that you'll need for kit bashing are ones that you probably already have from building your kits normally. These are, of course, a hobby knife, some files, and some clippers. These will form your basic tool set, and you'll find yourself reaching for these time and time again. Now, I often get asked about which brands of these tools I use, so this is an excellent chance for me to go into a little more detail about them. First of all, I have my hobby knife, or rather my scalpel. I made the switch to scalpels a few years ago, and while that transition to a much sharper blade is a little daunting, it's been one of the best decisions that I've made regarding my tools. The scalpel I use is a Swan Morton size 3 handle alongside 10A blades. I'd also use these more rounded 6 blades, but the 10As see the vast majority of the work. Replacement scalpel blades are incredibly cheap. If you buy them in bulk and being readily available on eBay, means you can keep swapping out for fresh blades as you need them. This is important as it not only makes the blades easier to use, but also much safer. Anyone who works with blades for a living will attest that sharper blades tend to be less likely to cut you. As you need less pressure to achieve a cut, you generally have more control over the blade and so are less likely to slip up. The Humble Hobby Knife has lots of uses. It can be used to cut away smaller parts of models and is especially useful when you need to remove something with surgical precision, as the narrow profile of the blade can easily slip into gaps and other hard to reach areas. It's also exceptionally helpful when you wish to shave away certain details or to reduce a component size so that it can fit into a new location. I should also note that having a good surface to work on is also important. I have this rather large A1 size cutting mat that provides protection to my desk as well as offering a softer surface that would prevent the blade from slipping as I cut into it. These are pretty much all the same though, so what brand you go for is entirely up to your own discretion. Next up, I have my clippers. These find the most use in removing components from sprues and help to ensure that you don't accidentally break those fiddly bits as you do so. But they can also be put to good use for separating certain aspects of a part from the rest of it. If you need a quick way to make a cut that doesn't require quite as much precision or you're cutting through something a little thicker, then the clippers are the go-to tool. You will notice that my clippers feature a flat and a tapered side. A lot of people miss this, but when you're making your cuts, always ensure that the flat side is held against the part of the component that you want to retain. If you don't, the angled side will effectively pinch in around the cut and potentially ruin your component. So always keep that in mind. Now it's also important to get yourself a good pair of clippers too. I've used lots of brands. Tamiya, Army Painter, Games Workshop, and even those generic cheap ones that you can pick up for a few quid. But by far my favorite are these Red Grass Games Precision Nippers. They're extremely sharp and have stayed so even after excessive use. They are a little pricey, but they are definitely worth it in my opinion. I only tend to use my precision nippers on plastic components and keep my older, more worn out clippers for cutting through metal wire. Retaining your expensive clippers for just cutting through plastic will help to massively maintain their sharpness. Files are very simple tools and are equally straightforward to use. They come in a few different shapes and sizes, but generally they are used in the exact same way. Their purpose is to smooth out, flatten, or reduce the size of certain areas. They make for an excellent complement to your knife, but have the added advantage of allowing you to completely flatten out a surface and generally being safer to use if you're not as comfortable with a blade. I do generally use my scalpel for smoothing things out more often than the files, but they are still helpful to keep to hand. The files I use are from the Army Painter, and I've found that most files intended for miniature modeling are fairly equal in effectiveness, so just grab whatever you can get your hands on. So, that's the basic tools covered, the things that you're already likely to have in your possession, but there are other items that I make frequent use of too. Such as this pin vise. It's basically a hand-powered drill that takes smaller diameter drill bits. One millimeter is my most frequently used size, but I've used larger sizes too. 
Most people will use these for drilling at their weapon barrels, but there are some additional uses as well. Drilling holes into armor makes for effective battle damage, but it also has more functional uses too. When I'm trying to attach components that have small contact points or are quite precarious, I often employ a pinning technique. This usually involves drilling two holes, gluing the length of wire into one, and then attaching the wire into the other hole. This strengthens the bond and gives you a much greater freedom in how you can attach components together that would normally have never been attached to one another. Again, the brand of the pin vise doesn't matter too much. I use this old Citadel one that I've had for quite a few years now, and the drill bits can be picked up at your local hardware store. The next items in my kit bashing toolbox are my saws, of which I have two varieties, big and little. The big saw is used for cutting through larger and chunkier components that are too thick to cut through with my clippers. However, its size, while allowing you to make short work of the more heavy duty cuts, is quite unwieldy for the more delicate work, which is why I have a smaller saw as well. I picked one of these up from Amazon and they come in a variety of different shaped blades. These are much finer and so are particularly helpful when a little more care is needed. I found good use for this tool in my primary character conversions and continue to find it helpful for those larger, more extreme kit bashes. So that covers most of the tools that I use in my conversions, but what about some of the materials? The most common of these is glue, of which I use two types. For bonding plastics, I use this product from Deluxe Materials. It's called Plastic Magic, and I originally used it to glue ABS plastic kits, like those produced by Rubicon. However, it's also great for application on polystyrene plastics, like those found in Games Workshop kits. The little brush applicator makes it excellent for precisely applying the glue into those harder to reach or smaller areas. It also gives you much more control over exactly how much of the glue you are applying. For anything that isn't plastic, like resin and metal, I use super glue. Again, the brand isn't particularly important. Some are better than others, but I've had good experiences with the Army Painter. I would, however, strongly recommend avoiding those metal tubes, unless you enjoy gluing your fingers together regularly. And finally, I have my wire. This is most commonly used when pinning, as I described earlier, but I have found other uses for it too. The wire I use is sold as one millimeter thick florist wire. I assume that it's used in flower arranging or maybe growing them. I'm not sure, but what I do know is that it's cheap, soft enough to cut easily and flexible enough to bend into shape. And so that covers all of my most commonly used tools and materials for kit bashing and conversions. There are of course other items I have and do continue to use, but these were the most frequently used and also the ones that I get asked the most questions about. I will include all the relevant links to where you can pick these up for yourself. While they will be of course UK centric, you should be able to find similar products available in your own countries too. All those links will be found in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and found the focus on the tools and materials that I use helpful, then please do let me know in the comments, along with any of the generic kit bashing tips or methods you would like to see this series cover. So the final thing to say is a massive thank you to all of my supporters. Whether you support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, or you just use my affiliates links, your help is what keeps this channel alive and is what allows me to build these conversions for you. If you'd like to help me out, then you can check out my description for all the relevant links. And so until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.